the Radio Wemo Breakfast. The G- Geek Show. Joining us from The Geek Show, yes, The Geek Show's back on the Radio Wemo Show here on Kiwi. Uh, relocated Mohawk Studios from Auckland to Wellington, Ms. Behaviour. Good morning, Ms. B. Good morning, Mama. A smooth move? It's been a pretty smooth move all round, actually, yes. Us and the studio kickers came down from Auckland last week, and we're nicely settled in now on Cuba Street. Oh, Q- oh well, right in the hub of it. Wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Creative quarter. That's awesome. Mm. Yeah. And, so, and, and, and you're just getting the studio organised, all the technology plugged in, all that kind of stuff? That's right, yes. We're still, still getting ourselves set up, but Calvin's got his, uh, his music studio set up because he's working on his album. And I've just started teaching at Victoria University. And what will you be doing there? I'm uh, teaching professional practice on the design innovation degree at the School of Architecture and Design. So it's business studies and, um, yeah, future of business. And so very much in a, um, a, a technological realm or, or is it much broader than that? Oh, it's pretty broad, actually. It's mm. a sort of an overview about structures of companies, and uh, it's to help the uh, industrial designers and the architect students and the web designers understand how they're going to, you know, the, the, the systems that they'll be using when they when they graduate. Excellent. Well, a new beginning for, for Mohawk Studios. Definitely. No, yeah. we're loving it already. Yeah. I love the fact that everything's within a two-minute walk of here. Yeah, yeah, well, that's, that's got to be a change. And at least the um, public transport mostly works most of the time. Mostly, yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, uh, did, you, did you require um, this, this tool that we're going to be talking about today or this idea of mind mapping? Did you require any of that to actually make the move and organise yourselves? Yes, I think I did mind map out the uh, initial because it wasn't just the move; it's also getting our house ready to rent out, and and, and you know huge amounts to organise. So yeah. whenever I get to the point where I have masses of data to organise, the first thing I do is I usually mind map it out. Um, and mind maps are great because you can you can all you really need to mind map to start with is just a pen and a piece of paper. But obviously there are some very useful online tools as well that we'll talk about in a minute. Pen but and paper, that's old school. Go it's on. It's old school, but, you know, <laughs> pretty easy to, to, to get together. Um, and the concept is very, very simple. Now, my maps have been around for a very long time. I know, you know, some people think they're sort of a newish kind of invention because they were popularized by uh, a psychology author, Tony Buzan. But... There are actually examples of mind maps going right back to the 3rd century. There was a guy called Pofir of Tyros, who was a noted thinker of the 3rd century, who mind mapped up the concepts of Aristotle. So it's, uh, you know, it's a technique and a tool for brainstorming, visual thinking and problem solving that's been used for many, many years. And they're being used more and more now in education, which is you know, the, the example that I'm using right now with, with t- teaching my course. Um, every single lecture that I give, and, and in fact, every single lecture or, or you know, the keynote speech that I've been giving for about three, four years now, I've been using a tool called MindMeister, which is an online mind mapping tool. But you know, going back to the pen and paper to start, simplistically, if you if you want to mind map out a problem or, or, or mind map out to something you're trying to you know to brainstorm, mm. the first thing you do is you write. Uh, a word or a few words in the middle of your paper to describe what it is. So, you know, it could be the, the, the title of your speech or, 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 you know, like you said, family party. Yeah. And then you put a circle around it. So that sits right in the middle of your, your piece of paper. And then what you do is you start off with put, putting main branches off it. So you, you draw a line and then you'll think, well, let, you know, let's use the family party, for example, guest list. So you'll put a branch that says guest list. And then you might, and then under, then branching off from that branch are, you know, the people on the guest list. So then you might have a family guest list, then friends, and then your family. That branches off. So you can see that every time you add a branch, it extends away from the main point. Mm. And the further you get away, the more detail you put in. And then the next branch might be food. So next to that, you'll, you'll decide you've got, I don't know, you've got meat eaters on one branch and then you've vegetarians on another. And then branching off from those will be what you need to go and buy to get, you know, sorting out your catering. Yeah. And then you might have beverages, so non-alcoholic, alcoholic, yeah. um, and so on. And the key thing is mind maps are a visual way of organizing information in a similar way to the way the brain works. Yeah, because cause brains, we, we were taught yeah. this. We were taught this at school, and and yet yes. and yet it's it's kind of a skill that you 
that you you leave at school for some reason, but but it's so applicable and you should always use it. That's right, and this is it. And they 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 do very much teach it at school now, just of ways of getting your head around stuff, getting your head down onto paper, without having to make huge long lists mm. or without having to write full blown essays. Yeah. I mean, for example, I've I've been saying to uh, someone I've been uh, talking to this week about um, you know grappling with the amount of work you have to do on a degree course. Instead of ha- writing a full essay, what you can do is you can mind map the essay to the point that writing it up would be a very simple thing. Mm -hmm. You never actually have to sit down and write the dense blocks of text to get the same information out. So for making notes in class or in a meeting or brainstorming sessions, it's an incredibly useful tool because Mm -hmm. you just capture the really important bits. And because you see it on this diagrammatic format um, and the, with the, the branches going around in, in sort of a clock face format, you get to see the interconnections between the different subsections. Mm. And when, like me, you know, if like me, you're, you're dealing with quite a complex uh, task, which is to map out an entire course into sub lectures, and then you have the, you know, obviously the, the, the activities and the guest speakers. First thing I did when I was grappling with it was. I put together a mind map, and it just lets you see it in a way that makes it easy for your brain to get, you know, mm. for you to get your head around it. Mm. So, if you weren't going to be using um, pen and paper, what are the yep. alternatives now? Well, the open source version that uh, quite a lot of people use is called Free Mind. So, Free Mind is easy to get online. I'm pretty sure it runs uh, across Macs and PCs, but that's the open source version. So, quite a lot of the uh, mind mapping tools export mind maps to a free mind version. Um, The one that I particularly like, which is a browser-based version, though I believe it does run offline and it also runs on mobile phones. So you could be doing this on your your iPhone. Mm. Um, That's called MindMeister. So M-I-N-D-M-E-I-S-T-E-R because it's it's a German company who came across, uh, who, who set it up. And with MindMeister, you can have a free account with three free mind maps. And then if you want to upgrade, then I think it's 60 US a year for as many as you want. All you can eat. Then there was another one, <clears throat> which we used um, when we were doing the Geek Show on Alt TV a couple of years ago. Because we were putting together half an hour of television in a week. There were two of us. Incredible amount of work, you know, as you can imagine. Um, we had to do research. We had to find video clips and you clip the script and pull all of this together yeah. in, in a matter of days. So hugely complicated. And what we used was a tool called The Brain. Um, now, this is, this is a, a piece of software which is, you, you can get a free version online. I think it's thebrain.com. So they do offer a free cut-down version. And then if you want the all singing, all dancing one, then it, it, you have to pay for it. Yeah. But it's, <clears throat> it's very, very sophisticated because with MindMeister, it's, it's, MindMeister is very, very uh, useful and powerful, but it's quite flat still. Whereas with the brain, you end up being able to interconnect nodes with other nodes and other maps to the point that if you have, for example, one of, our, our, one of the maps that we did for one of our weekly shows that then had a connection to next week's show, so we might have a run-on of a topic into two weeks, it allows you to move through your mind maps almost as if you're flying through the 3D virtual world huh. that contains all your data and your clippings and your images. And it, it, was, it was just fantastic. So it kind of, kind of makes, it, makes it fun at the same time. It makes it incredibly good fun because it's just so quick and easy. And you can just see how things interconnect to other things, which when you're working on lists and flat documents, it's so easy to miss things. You know, you just don't mm. see how that, that list of to-dos connects to that one. But with this 3D mind mapping interface, it's just very slick. And it really, really helped enormously. I mean, in hindsight, I have no idea how we would have put the show together in that time frame without that tool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, um, it's certainly, yeah, uh, th- this, is, um, this has given me a few ideas for perhaps some organization around my chaotic existence. Here on the That's show. Right. And <laughs> <laughs> we're, or we all have. Yeah. And the thing is, you can also collaborate. You can share a, a lot of these tools. So you can actually do collaborative mind mapping with people who are in remote locations. Right. So it's, it, again, I, I've been encouraging my students 
to, to, to get a Mind Maestro account and then potentially uh, collaborate and share some of their note spaces, especially if they're doing group, group tutorials, for example. Because and, and I remember um, a guy called Howard Weingold, who is an uh, old school internet god, as we call them, mm. you know, the ones who've been around for many, many years. Um, he's been around since the, uh, the Well community. He wrote a book a few years ago about massively mobile networks. He's now teaching in Stanford and Berkeley. And I remember one weekend I saw him online, because he's on Twitter, asking if there was a tool that anyone could suggest to allow his students to take collaborative notes you know, in real time in mm. one of his classes. So I just tweeted back and said, have you used my Meister? And I got a message back from him the next day saying, this was brilliant. I've got three students, you know, in real time, making notes in this shared space. Right. And it was the first time that any any of them had actively volunteered to do so because yeah. they thought it looked like fun. Because it was and fun. And it is fun. Yeah. Mm. Thank you very much, Ms. B.